Many people these days think that this is a recent invention of gastropub culture. In fact, it dates back to medieval Europe, where it was considered a breakfast food. Like many of the cooking videos I have up on YouTube, there are already a lot of recipes for some version of beer and cheese soup online. And in fact, many good cooks imagine that they could just pour some beer into a Mornay sauce and voila, soup's on. In fact, it requires a delicate touch and a careful balance of flavors to be smooth, rich, and delicious without being nauseatingly heavy or sickeningly salty. Okay, I get uh, the carrot, the leek. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to uh, clean leeks. The one that's the most efficient is you first cut the end off, which I actually already did. Then you run a knife like this. And you run this under, under water. And this will rinse off all the dirt in it without destroying the, the leek. It's very, you can see I've cut the vegetables up it's still into fairly large pieces. I haven't even cut the garlic up at all. This is going to be, uh, the butter's just melted on a medium heat. It's at number 5 out of 1 to 10. And then I'm going to add the vegetables to this and very slowly cook them. This is what it looks like after 10 minutes. It's still simmering away slowly in the butter on the same number 5 heat. Okay, it's been just over half an hour now. And uh, as you, if you look closely, you can see there's some little brown bits, the finer pieces of leek are um, starting to turn brown and there's some little patches of color like on the garlic and if you can see that there's some golden parts this is this is sufficient you don't want to cook it beyond this because you definitely don't want to burn taste in this so now I'm going to strain it and sieve here you just try to get most of the butter off of it that you can it doesn't have to be you don't have to go crazy here and uh, this butter below that's what we're going to use Okay, I rinsed out the pan, and now I'm adding butter that was strained off of the vegetables. We're going to begin heating this. To this. And then we're going to begin uh, whisking it together. A little bit. And we'll start with a wooden spoon after, after we get this incorporated well. We'll start with a wooden spoon. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I've got it heated also on a 5, on 110, and you might be wondering why didn't I just leave the vegetables in it? <laughs> Two things. First of all, vegetables have a lot of moisture in them, and that's going to interfere with making the roux. Second of all, I'm going to take this roux to a fairly dark stage, which means the vegetables would be burnt and bitter before the, the roux got to the stage that we wanted. So we want to cook the vegetables in the butter to soften them and give them flavor, but we can't leave them in the butter when we're making the roux, we're just going to ruin them. Meanwhile, I'm going to add those vegetables that were cooked in the butter to uh, either a small food processor or, even better, the cup for a stick blender, along with um, the chicken stock. And these are going to get uh, pureed. You want to make sure that you have something that doesn't have any lumps. So puree it well because you don't want a lumpy soup in this. Okay. I'm at what, uh, on that chart is called toast or toasty <coughs> now, and I'm going to add uh, milk to this and begin whisking it in. Just stick it up a little bit. This is what we're looking for. Very thick and heavy. This is where it's, what it's going to be like. Now I'm going to add the vegetable and chicken stock puree to this, which will help cool it down. I took it off the burner. This will help cool it down, get it ready to start adding the cheese. You still need to check the temperature after this. Stick your finger in it and make sure it's not too hot. I already got the right color of cheddar to get the carrot. Now it's got the cheese in it, and as you can see, it's really, really thick. It should be like this before you add the, the ale. 
very thick. Okay, and in it goes. Now, I'm going to whisk this together and let it start reducing. Definitely want to fry some bacon and crumble it over the soup. It's an important ingredient.